Genito 288 Special Focus Area Plan Update, Ms. Weworker. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the uh, board, Dr. Casey. Um, this afternoon, I'm here to present a brief update on the draft Genito 288 Special Focus Area Plan. Um, we did just have a work session at the Planning Commission last week, and they have set a public hearing for their September 22nd meeting. So ahead of that, we wanted to provide you a brief update on the draft plan. Okay, thank you. So first, um, just a high-level overview and introduction. So what is a special focus area plan? Well, the special focus area plan is a long-range plan providing detailed development guidance to areas undergoing or having a high potential for change. Um, it is a component of the countywide comprehensive plan, and the SFA identifies opportunities and strategies for redevelopment of key properties through detailed design guidelines and placemaking strategies. So what does the SFA do? The SFA is a general guide for long-range growth and development. It helps show potential redevelopment and development patterns and key elements of any future development. It addresses a variety of community issues, opportunities, and concerns. It establishes a framework for future growth and change within the community, and it identifies projects and actions that are necessary to implement the plan. So why Genito 288? So there are several factors that prompted the initiation of the special focus area plan in the Genito 280 area. The area includes River City Sportsplex, which has become a national sports tourism draw for Chesterfield and the greater Richmond region. And the county saw an opportunity to enhance and maximize the experience of visitors and county residents that visit the River City Sportsplex. Additionally, the area also includes Oak Lake Business Park, which is an employment center that brings workers and visitors to the area regularly. Additionally, in December of 2020, Southside Speedway closed and the future use of the property was unknown. This prompted the county to begin a comprehensive study of the area while also giving, giving us an opportunity to engage with the public on the future use of the Southside Speedway site as well as the broader surrounding community and area. In the summer and fall of 2021, um, we did a pretty extensive community outreach effort online as well as a hybrid in-person and online community meeting. We had over 1,100 responses to our initial community input um, form online. And so we took all of the information that we were hearing from the community, worked with our fellow community development um, departments to develop a draft uh, plan and recommendations that we have before you today. Um, earlier this summer in July, we held a, another community meeting in person um, in, the, in the area to present those initial recommendations to the community and solicit their um, initial kind of response and feedback to that. So it, for those that were unable to attend the in-person, we also had an online component as well. So again, just really trying to engage with the community throughout this process as we're developing recommendations. Um, and then ultimately drafted um, kind of the kind of piece together plan that we have before the, the commission at their meeting um, next month, um, which is currently online for community review and input as well ahead of the public hearing. So real briefly, we're gonna go over some of the major elements of the plan. So the plan consists of seven sections. Um, kind of the real meat pieces of it are the uh, land use and concept plans where we go through um, some conceptual layouts and we'll present that to you this afternoon, um, as well as the infrastructure and design guide sections. So the draft conceptual plan um, embodies the overall vision and guidelines of the plan. The conceptual plan focuses on the key development and redevelopment properties within that larger plan geography um, and aims to enhance and maximize the experience of visitors and users of River City Sportsplex, as well as those who live in the surrounding area. So the graphics and images that are shown um, represent one possible scenario for potential development and redevelopment. So we're not saying it's in, you know, gonna turn out exactly like this as redevelopment occurs, but we wanted to show how we could make some of the kind of major elements of um, bike ped connectivity, um, connections for, for people driving from River City Sportsplex, Sportsplex um, community green space, as well as some additional opportunities um, for entertainment, sport, 
important recreation uses as well as um, destination retail and sports and other wellness uses. So right now there isn't much for people to do when they come to River City Sportsplex. Um, and we know we have a lot of people coming to the area um, for tournaments, for using the facilities. So we want people that are coming to the park to have other things to do in the area. So places for people to be able to grab a bite to eat um, after a game or in between games. Um, there's a, really a lot of potential to build on of, of the success at River City Sportsplex and keep some of those tour sellers in Chesterfield. Um, so some of the preferred uses, if we you know, kind of go back and forth between the destination retail and the entertainment, sport, and recreation we're looking at, include some of the food-based businesses, so things like restaurants, breweries, coffee shops, really places for people to go um, that are either visiting River City or the surrounding community, places for those individuals to go so they're not having to travel you know, down to Whole Street or, or further away. Um, Small-scale shops and retail uses, um, experiential uses, so things for people to do in the area. Um, and then also looking at the enhancement and reuse of the former Southside Speedway site. So this presents a unique opportunity to create some sort of multi-purpose entertainment, sport, and recreation venue. And some of um, the ideas that we've looked at for that area and preferred uses include a sports stadium, an entertainment slash event venue, a revamped or improved racing facility, um, auto racing museum, commercial entertainment and recreation, and then including in um, public, public spaces as possible. Um, so the opportunity, as I kind of hinted at before, also exists to play off of the variety of sports and wellness-based uses within the area. Um, we think this could be accomplished through public or private facilities or a public-private partnership. Um, a multi-purpose indoor recreation facility could provide for a variety of programming that meets the needs of the county's diverse population and the changing trends in recreation. Um, we also think that an opportunity exists for community green space in the undeveloped natural area to the rear of the Southside Speedway site that has some environmental encumbrances on it um, that could provide opportunities for passive recreation um, while also preserving environmental features in the area. Um, we've also included um, the opportunity for a mid-scale hotel um, based on conversations with economic development and some of their partners in the area that would provide for easily accessible lodging um, for River City Sportsplex visitors. Moving into the design guide, one of the um, major components is looking at consistent landscaping and streetscaping amenities throughout the planned geography and specifically along Genito Road. We think this would not only improve the aesthetic quality of the area, would, but would also improve the feeling of safety for those biking and walking in the area. So through streetscaping amenities and treatments, the area can transform from an overgrown and underutilized corridor to one that creates a sense of place and provides connections for people to the area amenities. We also outline um, design guidelines for building placement and orientation, um, public gathering spaces throughout any new development that would be incorporated into the development projects. Um, that are designed to enhance the visual and physical environment while also offering people a comfortable spot to gather um, and interact within the area, um, as well as providing guidance for new public and private roads and how those should be designed in a pedestrian-friendly manner. And then lastly, wayfinding signage should be used throughout the area to not only direct people um, to destinations within the development, but also directing people from outside the community and from our major roadways of how to get to this facility as well um, would help provide that from the greater kind of surrounding community and road network. So lastly, um, as I mentioned, the draft plan has been posted to the project webpage for community review and input ahead of the Planning Commission's public hearing um, in September. So the Planning Commission will hold a public hearing um, on the draft plan at their September 22nd meeting. And then depending on the action of the Planning Commission, we would be back um, in front of the Board of Supervisors following that to go through your public hearing process as well. So that's all I have for you this afternoon, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Questions from Ms. Wework? Thank you for this excellent work, and uh, we look forward to the Planning Commission's um, work on this as well. And thank you so much, as always. Thank you. Thank you.